and read the Word of God together. Now the book of John chapter 4, chapter number 8 and verse 44, the Bible says this, Ye are of your father the devil, wow, and the lust of your father ye would do. He was a murderer from the beginning and both not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he's a liar and the father of it. Wow, what about that? Boy, Jesus didn't mince any words when he was talking to those Jews, did he? The Bible says in the book of the Revelation, chapter number 20 and verse number 10, the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Father, it's a blessing to be in the house of God. It's a blessing to have a copy of the word of God. It's a blessing to be able to preach the wonderful truths of our God. Speak through thy servant. Take my tongue. Take my mind. Take my lips. Take this servant of yours today and use him according to thy perfect and divine will. Touch every heart. Save every soul that's lost. Bring home the cold, the indifferent, the backslidden. Be glorified. Be exalted. Be praised. We'll say thank you for we ask it in Jesus' holy and righteous name. Amen, amen, you may be seated. I want to speak to you today upon the devil's two box. The devil's two box. You say the devil's got a two box? He sure has. Don't you ever forget him. The Bible said the devil comes as an angel of light. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 14, he comes as an angel of light. He is a roaring lion in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, a roaring lion. Man, you hear them lions roar on TV, and man, that's scary roar, isn't it? And yet the devil's like a roaring lion. The Bible said he was as a serpent in the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. The Bible said he sometimes, well, sometimes he comes as a beautiful woman, as you find in the book of Proverbs. He comes as a handsome man. In the case of Potiphar's wife, she looked at Joe's man. He's a good-looking young man, and so she tried to get him to lay with her, but he wouldn't do it. He said no. And so it's a wonderful thing to be able to say no to the temptations of life and to say no to the devil. When the devil comes around, hey, don't argue with him. Just say no, and let the Word of God be what you want to stand on. The Bible said there's a tempter in Matthew chapter 4, and verse 3. And when the tempter came, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. If you're the Son of God. That's what he's always saying to Jesus. He's trying to get Jesus to obey him. And, of course, Jesus did not obey him. He just used the word of God. That's all you've got to do to overcome the devil is to use the word of God. That's the reason you know you need to know the word of God because you can quote it back to the devil and the devil has to flee. In First Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 5, he said, I sinned to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter having tempted you in our labor be in vain. Paul wanted them to recognize the tempter was after them and he was always around. Hey, the devil's always around. You know that? The devil ain't gonna leave you for long. I mean, you may pray him away for a while, but he'll come back. He'll be back. He'll be back a knocking on your door. Just remember that. The Bible tells us he was a sore in the book of Matthew chapter 13. He said the tires were sold by the enemy, the devil. The devil sows tires. And the devil puts people in church that are unsaved and they're wicked. And that's the way he puts tires among us. The Bible says he's a trapper. He sets traps. The Bible says, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 26, that, that you may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, the trap of the devil. The devil's got traps. He's got these snares set to trap people and uh, Bring him into sin. Then he's a trickster. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, the wiles of the devil, the tricks of the devil. He's a trickster and he's always on the job. And so the devil comes in different ways. Well, I want you to notice as we look at the two box of the devil, there's some things in the devil's two box you need to recognize because, hey, if you don't recognize these things, he'll use them on you. Yes, sir, and we don't want the devil using these tools on us. Hey, we want to be a nut that nothing will fear, right? Yes, sir. Number one, he uses lies. The Bible said in John 8, 44, I read it to you. He's a liar and the father of a lie. He's a liar from the very beginning. He lied in the beginning. He'll keep on lying. He's a liar and the devil uses lies to bring people down. That's one of his big tools to lie, to lie, to lie. Hey, don't be caught up in the devil's lie. 
And of course, the devil, he, uh, he cast his doubt. He cast his doubt. And of course, he uses lies to cast this doubt. He cast his doubt on the creation. They come up and say, all oh, this baloney, it just happened to be a great explosion, a great boom, a great uh, boom. Yeah, hey, hey, God did send it out there. And the universe is still traveling through the universe because one day God's going to say, whoa, he's going to drag it in. The Bible said he's going to fold it up like a garment and he's going to make a brand spanking new earth and a brand spanking new heaven. You say, can God do that? He made the first and didn't have any trouble. He made the first and in six days and hey, the seven day rested. He made everything you see and everything you don't see. He made it in six days. God is able. He's the creator. But this crowd today, they don't believe that. The devil puts doubt in their mind about the creation. I'm glad I believe the Bible from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21. Yes, sirree. Oh, they, the devil puts a doubt in people's mind. Is there really a God? I've never seen God. I've never seen Jesus and never seen angels. Hey, you better know there's a God. The Bible said the creation, the heavenly still, there is a God. The sun says there's a God. The moon says there's a God. The stars say there is a God. All the constellations say there is a God. Yes, sir, everything out there says there is a God. Everything on planet Earth says there's a God. Isn't it amazing as you look at the different creatures? I'm amazed. You know, when I was a little boy, I was always wanting to shoot squirrels and shoot birds and shoot crows and all that and I never could get a crow you know them bookers they got a watcher they're pretty wise you know what they got a watcher and I've been trying to sneak up on them an old crow up in the tree east arch holler next thing on doom they're all gone hey God's creation is amazing and you know what one day I stopped begin to look at God's creation and just to see how God made everything it's amazing and the different appetites he gives different creatures and the way they operate and how, what instincts they're given I mean some of them got instincts that you and I will never never have I mean they can do things you can't do Hey, you can step on them, you can kill them and everything else, but you can't spin a web. <laughs> you can't climb a tree like a squirrel. You can't fly like a bird. Oh, you may get an airplane and fly like a bird. You may have hooks on to climb like a squirrel, but you can't jump them limbs like a squirrel. <laughs> hey, 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 what about them little old ground squirrels? We got one running around. He's got a little old tail about that long. He'll stick that thing up and choo, he shoots across that yard like a, a beam of light. Hey, hey, isn't it amazing to watch God's creation? God's creation, it's amazing. And hey, if people don't believe there is a God, don't believe in God's creation, it's amazing. Well, they don't believe the Word of God. Hey, you think that's the Word of God? No, oh, they'll say, I don't believe it's the Word of God. You better believe every word of it. You're a fool, you're a fool, you're a fool not to believe the Word of God. The devil uses doubt. He casts doubt upon the Word of God in the Garden of Eden. Yay, hath God said, yes, God has said. And you better believe God said it. And if God said it, brother, it will happen just as he said it will will happen just as surely as I'm here and you're there. And so the devil cast doubt upon the word of God. He cast doubt upon the fact that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. A lot of Jews, the Orthodox Jews, they don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. They don't believe he's the Messiah. Well, I was riding across Florida years ago. We won one of those things, you know, you sign up and you win three nights or four nights and three days or something like that. And they take you and uh, drill you and put pressure on you to buy some of them timeshares. In this case, it was lots, lots over on the Gulf side. And looking back, uh, well, I finally said, okay, I'll buy one. <laughs> they said, you got 30 days to back out. So when I got home, I called and said, I back out. <laughs> Uh, but I was sitting across from this Jew and she said, got to talking to her and she said, oh, Jesus was a prophet and he went out in the wilderness like to starve himself to death. That's what they think about Jesus. No, he's the son of God. He's the uh, Messiah that was sent to this world to save those Jews and to set them free. Oh, the devil uses doubt. Don't he use his doubt? Yes, serene. And you know what? The old devil, he'll cast doubt on the is that life after death. There's a lot of people who don't believe in life after death. They say, when I die, that's it. I'll just perish and that's it. The Bible said the soul of men will live on and on and on. There's just two places to go when you die, heaven or hell, and you're going to live on. That soul's going to live on. The Bible talks about only that uh, the rich man and Lazarus, they died. 
And they certainly didn't perish, did they? One of them was in the paradise side and the other was in the hell side. The old rich man lifted his eyes and hell been in torment, looked over there and saw Lazarus. Abraham, said Lazarus over here, let him dip his finger in water and touch my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. He was dead, but his soul was in hell. You better believe the word of God, friend. You better believe it. And you're a fool if you don't. You're a fool if you don't. I've had people say, I don't believe there's life after death. I believe when I die, I'll be gone. No, no. Some people don't believe there's a heaven, and some people don't believe there's a hell. Hey, if there is a heaven, there is a hell. If there's a hell, there's a heaven. Jesus talked about both of them. And so, hey, the devil cast doubt upon the word of God, upon many things. And so, hey, that's one of the tools the devil is down. Then number three, there's temptation. He entices men to sin. You have a free will, right? You've heard me say that many times. You have the power of choice. The devil cannot make you sin, but he can entice you to sin. He can tempt you to sin, but he can't make you sin because you can say no or you can say yes. And so it's up to you which one will you say if you got Jesus in your heart, you're going to say no. No, devil, no, devil. I've got somebody stronger in my house than you. And that somebody is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, sirree. And so the Bible said in the book of James, James chapter 1 and verse 13, Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. If you're tempted, God didn't tempt you. You've heard these people done uh, does some of these awful crimes. They said, God told me to do it. God never told them to do it. The devil told them to do it. That's what it is. The devil told them to do it. God never tells you to sin. He never leads you into sin. If something's enticing you, it is the devil enticing you. It's the devil trying to get you to do it. But you don't have to do it. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away with his own lust and enticed. Hey, hey, hey. And so, hey, when the devil comes tempting, just close the door and don't answer the door. Temptation is the devil knocking, seeing this when you open the door and let him come in. And then number four, there's another tool the devil uses. I call this the devil's master tool. It's the grandest, it's the greatest of all tools, I believe, that the devil uses. It is deception. The devil uses deception. Man is deceived by the devil. Men are deceived by other people. Men can deceive themselves, the Bible said. They can deceive their own heart. They can tell themselves how good they are. Hey, you don't need a savior. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to read the Bible. You're good enough. Hey, hey, you're deceiving your own self. That's for sure the devil. Hey, he, he don't have any trouble with you because you've done deceiving yourself. But the Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. And so it is. I want, you to, get, I want to give you some examples of deception. Examples of deception. People that's been deceived. Satan deceived Eve in the garden. The Bible says Adam was not deceived, but Eve was deceived. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14. Eve was deceived. Adam was not deceived. Adam knew that she had sinned but he willfully sinned so that he could have fellowship she had fallen. He's up here and she's down here because she has fallen because of sin. And Adam can't have any fellowship with her because he's up here. Hey, we can't have any fellowship with her, the world, can we? You can talk to the world, but you can't have fellowship with them. You can buddy with them maybe, but you can't have fellowship with them in the fullest sense of the word. And so he willfully takes that fruit and he falls. Adam was not deceived, but Eve was deceived. Satan deceived Eve. And then the Bible tells us Laban deceived Jacob in the book of Genesis 31, 7. He, he had deceived him. The Bible said 10 different times, change his wages. He said, I want to give you this much. And then he changed his wages. The Bible said Michael deceived Saul about David. You know, uh, David had married Michael Saul's daughter, and this old Saul's trying to kill David. And they said, David's sick. He sent the servants and said, bring him here. And they said, he's sick. 
said, go get him, bring him up here in the bed. And so she tells David, you better flee, you better flee. And so she puts some things in the bed to make it look like David's in the bed with his head covered up. And so they go in and they jerk the cover back. And it's not David, he's done fled. And uh, Saul said, why did, this, did you deceive me? She deceived him about David. And then Saul deceived the witch of Endor. He goes to the Endor witch because uh, God wouldn't listen to him. God wouldn't answer him. He inquired of the Lord and the Lord wouldn't talk to him. Hey, when God don't answer, brother, there's something on the line. When God don't pick up the telephone, there's something on the line. Get it off the line. Go to confession of sins. Go to seeking God and letting God clean that, that line up and get it where you can get through to God. And so he, he goes to the witch of Endor to find out something. He's troubled. He's facing the battle. He's facing the Philistines. He goes and he disguises himself and he says to the witch of Endor, bring up Samuel. Oh, she said, but Saul, he'll, if he finds out, he'll kill me. No, he Saul said, it's okay, it's okay. That was Saul talking. She didn't recognize him. He disguised himself. And so she didn't bring him up. A lot of people think she brought him up. No, God sent him up. God sent him up because he wanted to give Saul a message. You're going to be with me in just a day or two. And your sons are going to be with me. Oh, Saul, he went all to pieces. And then, of course, the indoor witch recognized who it was. And Saul had told her, you'll be okay. I won't do nothing to you. But he went to the wrong source, and he deceived that witch. But then the Bible said, my favorite chef, servant deceived uh, him because evidently gave David the wrong message. The Bible said, wine is a mocking strong, drink is raging. Whosoever deceived thereby is not wise. Strong drink and wine will deceive you. It's deceived multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of people. Drugs have deceived multitudes and multitudes of people. And they're going down, 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 down. The Bible said the old prophet over in the book of 1 Kings chapter 13. Read the whole chapter of 1 Kings chapter 13. The old prophet. God called a man, a prophet. I called the man of God down in Judah to come up to the northern kingdom, prophesy against it. He goes up there and prophesies. And uh, the king says, go home with me and eat bread. He said, God told me not to eat bread or drink water in this place to get out of here and to go a different way. And he started out. And uh, the, some of the old prophet's sons came home and told him. So he saddles up and takes off and catches the man of God. He said, come back and eat bread with me. Oh, but God told me not to. God told me to, not to eat bread or drink water in this place, and uh, I can't do it. He said, but an angel told me. But an angel appeared to me and told me. He lied to him. He deceived him. Hey, the devil's got different ways of deceiving people. That master tool of deception. Wow, boy, you got to watch that master tool of deception, don't you? Well, how do men deceive others? The Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 16 and verse 18, by good works and fair speeches. woo -hoo. Good works, words, excuse me, good words and fair speeches. Can't hardly read more writing. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 6, let no man deceive you with vain words, empty words, by lying words. The unfilled promises, unkept promises. Hey, the devil works overtime, don't he? He certainly does. And then notice people that uh, are being deceived in religion. They're deceived about salvation. I, if I'm just good, I'll go to heaven. If I'm, uh, if I'll get join the church, I'll go to heaven. If I'm baptized or sprinkled or catechized, I'll go to heaven. If I'm good to my neighbor, I'll go to heaven. If I keep the Ten Commandments, I'll go to heaven. Yeah, you can't do it. You can't do it, friend. That makes sure if you're lost and headed for hell, if you, you're trying to keep the Ten Commandments. There's none good, no, not one. We've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. And so what do we do? You've got to run to Jesus. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only door. By me, you've got to go to heaven. You've got to come through Jesus Christ. If you don't believe he's the son of God, you'll die in your sins. You'll be lost and lost forever. Hey, 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 there's a lot of people deceived in religion. There's a lot of dis 
deceive folks in finances. A lot of folks are deceived in business. A lot of folks are deceived in politics. They say all politicians lie and some lie more than others. Hold your belt right here and don't fall off. Don't jump overboard. If you do, you're liable to drown. You get out there in that big ocean. Don't jump overboard. <laughs> when we went fishing that time, and of course, I you know, went on a cruise one time, I said, boy, I wouldn't want to be off in that big ocean. And then the boat go off and leave me. Ooh, wouldn't that be scary? I intend to be scary. Hey, hey, what about, uh, what about this? The party of JFK. John Kennedy is not the same party of today. A lot of people think it is. But it has moved far to the left. Far to the left. They went to Marxism, socialism, and communism. Don't be deceived. He says that again and again through the word of God. Let no man deceive you. How can I keep from it, preacher? Believe the word of God. That's how you keep from it. Come to Christ. Don't vote the USA into a Cuba, into a Venezuela, into a China, into a Russia, into a North Korea. You know, there's people out there going to vote that way. They're going to vote this country into communism. Brother, I don't know which way it's going. I just know the devil, he's, he's working overtime. And he's a deceiver. He's got multitudes and multitudes deceived. Don't you forget that, friend. Don't you forget that. Oh, we better pray like we've never prayed before. Look what they're doing in colleges, indoctrinating kids. They're talking about, I heard one Survey talking this past week that 70% of college kids believe that free speech is dangerous. Did y'all hear that? That's what they're teaching in college. You need your higher education. I don't call that higher education. I call that based education, don't you? I call that demonic education. That's what I call it. They'll say, Know this matter of lies, they want to cool it down. They don't want to say it's lies, but that's what it is, lies, right? Oh, friend, let me tell you something. It's a sad thing when you look at all this protesting that went on. You know what they're doing? They're standing for Hamas, that murdering, raping, cruel crowd, that wicked crowd that don't, nothing is past them. They'll do anything. They'll take a woman and rape her and rape her and rape her and then kill her and chop her up. Who won't stand anyway? Who will stand behind that? Who can believe that? That's what these kids are doing out there on the street. They're standing against Israel. From the river to the sea. I don't even know what that, if they know what that means. God promised Abraham Isaac and Jacob from the Euphrates River all the way to the river of Egypt which is a little wadi on the lower end of Israel. It only runs when it rains. It's not the Nile River. I've seen, I've heard commentators say it was the Nile River. No, that'd be taken all of Egypt if it did. But it's that little river they call the river of Egypt. It's a wadi. That means it just runs when the rain comes. Then it went dry. When it gets dry, it dries up. Somebody said they've never got it to the Euphrates River. Well, David had it to the Euphrates and Solomon. They don't know what they mean when they say from the river to the sea. Maybe that's what they mean, all the way from the Euphrates over there. But I, some of them say, well, they're talking about Jordan. Well, I, I want you to know they can't have it. It's going to be free. Yeah, it's going to be free, all right. Anti- Semitism, anti-Semitic, has taken the form of anti-Zionism. Do you know what Zionism is? How many people know what Zionism is? 
Most people don't. It is the right of the people of God, the Jew, Israel, to live in their homeland that was given to them by God Almighty for an everlasting possession. Mr. Arab, you can't have it. Mr. Whoever, you can't have it. God gave it to the Jewish people. And if you keep sticking your nose in it, God's going to chop your nose off. God said, I'm going to bless them and bless you. I'm going to curse them and curse you. I don't know about you. I don't want the curses of God. I want the blessings of God. I want God to bless me, don't you? Yes, sirree. Can we just stop and shout a while? You know, there's some religious leaders are teaching replacement theology. Anybody know what replacement theology is? They say that uh, the church has replaced Israel. <laughs> That's the dumbest crowd I ever, I ever heard tell of. I mean, they're supposed to be religious. They're supposed to know the Bible. They haven't read the Bible. Have you ever read the book of Romans chapter 9, 10, and 11? Had God cast away his people? God forbid. He hadn't cast away his people. He said, brother, I don't want you to be in this mystery that God has uh, uh, blinded the Israel in part unto the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and then all Israel shall be saved. As written, I'll send a deliverer out of Zion, and he shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant unto them when I take away their sins. Hallelujah. Blessed be God Almighty. Aren't you glad he's alive and well? All you got to do is read the Bible. But the folks are too busy watching who shot Lucy and all these love stories and all these fiction stories. I don't like fiction. I'll just be honest with you. I ain't got time for fiction. I want to read the real stuff. I want to read something that's real. When you read the Word of God, you say, I don't understand it. Well, keep reading. After a while, you'll understand a little bit because the Bible interprets itself. If you read it far enough and long enough, it, it interprets itself. Y'all still with me? You know, the preachers, we had a different preacher here Wednesday tonight. He really preached a great sermon too. But he made a statement and, you know, a lot of it's in, among the commentators and commentaries and if you study Hebrews, you'll, you'll read about it. And they say, well, we don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews. You know why? They hadn't studied the word of God. Paul, one of his epistles, he said, this is a tale that I put on all my epistles. This is the way you know I wrote this. And all the 13 epistles that they know is from Paul, that tale is on it. There's one other tale in, the, in all the Bible that's got it on it that wasn't written by Paul, and that's John the Revelator. The book of the Revelation has the same tale. We know John wrote the book of the Revelation, right? You all agree with that? Say amen. But the book of Hebrews is the 14th letter from Paul that has that little tale on it. Is that an accident? That's God interpreting the Bible. Read it and believe it and obey it. It'll set you free. Amen. Let me go back and say what deceives men. The Bible says again, I read it again. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is rage, and whosoever deceived thereby is not wise. Hey, I don't want to be a fool to you. I want to be wise. Somebody said it's, it's a disease. No, it's not a disease. You'd never get it if you never drank. If you never take a drink of wine or liquor or a hard drink, you'll never get addicted. Hey, I've never drunk it. I've never tasted it. I've never tasted beer and all that other stuff. Stay away from it. Run from it, young people. Run. Run like it's a rattlesnake. Run like it's a lion after you. Run! Run with all the strength you have. Run. Get away from it because it is a snake. It'll bite you. And so, hey, wine is a mocker. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. I heard a man say, now, I don't know if this is true. I, I have never, I'm not around winos that much to know that much about it. But he said he had never seen a wino get saved. 
Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Don't take it as the gospel truth. If you know a wino, ask them if they know anybody that's gotten saved that it was a wino. He said they love it so good, it's so sweet, they love it so good, they won't give it up. I don't know. Strong drink is raging, it, it's boisterous, it's loud, it wants to show itself, and that's the way a lot of them do, isn't it? Whosoever is deceived thereby. You think it's good for you? You think it's going to pick you up? No, it's going to throw you down. It's going to throw you down. It's going to destroy you. That's what it's going to do. You're not wise. The Bible said in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 16, Edom was deceived by the terminus. Thy terminus, how mean and heck and great you think you are. And the pride of your heart. The pride will deceive you. It deceived old Slewfoot in, up in heaven when he was the anointed cherub. He was perfect in every way until he was lifted up in pride until pride was found in his heart. Pride will deceive you. You can think you're the prettiest, the greatest, the most wonderful person ever walked in shoe leather. That'll get you in trouble and deceive you. Hey, you're made out of dust. You'll go back to dust just like anybody else. You'll die just like the worst person that ever lived. And you'll go to hell if you're not saved. He said, Thou dwellest in the cleft of the rock. They had a false security. You know, a lot of people have a false security. I've got plenty of money. I'm in good health. I'm set for life. What was it the rich man said? I'll tear these barns down. I'll build greater barns and I'll fill them up and say, Soul, take your ease. Eat and drink and marry. For you have many days. Thou fool this night, thy soul be required of thee. In the book of Obadiah, chapter 1 and verse 3, thou sayest in his, in thy, that thou sayest in his heart, who shall bring me down? That's what Edom was saying. Edom was lifted up and they were deceived. Who's going to bring me down? I'm up here in this rock. They dwell in Edom. Edom, if you've ever watched the lost ark, in, what was his name, Ford? Harrison Ford played in it. They go down into Petra. Petra had a, in a one place, it's probably no wider than this aisle. You go down this ravine, down, down, you keep it going down and you get into what they call the Red Rock City of Petra. And they showed that little temple. The first thing you see when you come out of that ravine, you see that temple that's hewed out in the rock. And they show that on Harrison Ford's The Lost Ark. They thought they had it made. They was in there where nobody could get in there and they could just shoot them off one at a time and them soldiers came through that little narrow place. Bing, bing, bing! And just pile them up. But they were fools. They were deceived. God said, I'm going to bring you down. Wow, wow, wow. The Bible says... Revelation 18, 23, Mystery Babylon the Great deceived all nations. Deceived all nations by her sorceries. For all the merchants were the great men of the earth. By her sorceries, by her trickeries, and by those things, and by the lies. Deceived all nations. Listen to what Revelation 19, 20 says. The false prophet. He's talking about the false prophet. Deceive those that had the mark of the beast with the miracles which he had power to do. The false prophet, he's going to work miracles. I don't know how true those miracles are, but he's going to, at least they're going to put, uh, look like miracles, but he's going to deceive people with those miracles he had the power to do. Now, I've seen these magicians do things if you didn't know better, you'd say, man, <laughs> they're working miracles, wouldn't you? But we know that's a trick of the hand. We know it's not. Not real. And so the Bible said he deceives people. He deceives people with the miracles that he wrought. In Titus chapter number three and verse number three, the Bible said, For we ourselves also were sometimes, this is the way we used to be, some of us, foolish, disobedient, deceived. Was you ever deceived? Serving divers, lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Woo, 
Ooh, that's bad, ain't it? Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. You think you're going to get by with it? Whatever you do, it's going to come back to you. The Bible said it's going to come back. It's like the old saying, the chicken's going to come home. It's like the old saying, the swing's going to come back around. Hey, hey, brother, what you sow, you're going to reap, and you're going to reap later than you sow. You're going to reap more than you sow. You're going to reap the same thing that you sowed. Be not deceived. You can't mock God Almighty and get by with it. You can make faces at God. You can accuse God of all kind of things and Hey, hey, you never get by with it because God is uh, not mocked. The Bible said, 1 John 1, 8, we say we have no, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Yeah, I've heard people say, I ain't got no sin. <laughs> God lash in your face, don't he? 1 John 1, 3, 7, the Bible said, Little children, let no man deceive you, for the he that doeth righteous is righteous even as he is righteous. If you say you're righteous, and you are righteous, you're going to live right. You're going to be a righteous person. If you live up to your claims, you know a lot of people are claiming, but they don't live up to their name. Listen, God warns. God warns throughout the word of God. Know you not? The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. A lot of people are deceived about salvation, about going to heaven. Listen to what the Bible says. Know you not? The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor feminine. That means these folks want to be a woman. I want to be a woman. I want to be a man. And these dummies, dummies, let them run in the races with the women. Let them go into the women's bathroom. And women, you know what they ought to do? They ought to boycott the whole crowd. Or if when that boy comes in, they ought to throw him out. All them girls ought to gang up on him and beat the devil out of him. Make him that he'll never want to go in another girl's bathroom or change room. You agree with that? Say amen. amen. Say you're mean, preacher. No, bless God. That's light to what they're going to get received when they stand before God Almighty. He said, uh, abuse themselves of mankind. Homosexuals abusing themselves of mankind are thieves or covetous or drunkards. These people ain't going to be in heaven. He done said they wouldn't be. Nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, wow, what about that? And he goes on to say, and such were some of you. Such were some of you. You can find yourself in there somewhere. But ye are washed. Washed by the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. <laughs> Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. To be washed. But you're sanctified. You're set apart for God Almighty. You belong to him. You don't belong to yourself anymore. You belong to him. But you're justified just as though you'd never sinned in the sight of God. What about that? In the name of Jesus, our Lord, of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of God. What about that? Yes, beloved, the devil's a master deceiver. He deceived Eve in the very beginning, and he deceives up unto the very end. He's in the deceiving business. The Bible said in Revelation chapter 20, verse 3, and the devil was bound a thousand years that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. The millennial day, the devil will be bound and he will not be able to deceive anybody. Revelation 27, the Bible says this, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan is loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, and I like verse number 10, Revelation 20:10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. That's his end. The end of deception. You call me master and obey me not. You call me light and seek me not. You call me the way and walk me not. You call me life and desire me not. 
He called me wise and followed me not. He called me fair and loved me not. He called me rich and asked me not. He called me eternal and seek me not. He called me gracious and trust me not. He called me Lord, but you won't trust me and believe me and follow me. Don't be deceived. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I've given you the message God laid upon my heart. Don't let the devil deceive you about anything. He's a deceiver. That's his job. That's what he wants to do and he will do if it's all possible. He's got multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes deceived. Don't let him deceive you. Maybe the devil's been talking to you about some temptation that you need to slide around these altars and say, Lord, help me. Give me the power to overcome. I need the power to overcome every temptation. Everything the devil throws at me, Lord, I need you. I need you to help me. I need you to strengthen me. Whatever it is, ask him, and I'm glad he'll be there. Father, have your way right now in this invitation. Be glorified, be exalted, be praised. We'll say thank you in Jesus' name.